begin, again, I'm Kelly Hall. Um, I am here to let you know what an honor it is to be in this room with all the positive energy and all the positive vibes that are coming out of our discussions about culture change. I'm also very honored to be here with a very passionate colleague of mine, Carly. Um, and we are honored to be here representing our continuing education team. Um, we stand before you as training specialists. Um, and what this role does entail um, is a lot of corporate training, partnerships with the community, community partners, uh, curriculum development, and really building our capacity with that online learning piece, um, the development of that, um, those, that gam gamification, um, and those highly technical learning objects that we're really trying to infuse into all of our programming. Um, I should also say that we're part of a team, a larger team, um, with capacity in mental health, palliative end of life care, aging and seniors care, as well as international education. Um, also, just to tempt your taste buds a little bit before we get into the excellence in res resident-centered care, um, we do have some up and coming workshops um, that are going to focus on some specialty areas, two-day workshops, um, as well as um, a gerontology <laughs> certificate program, um, which will be fully online, um, and it will be cross-sectoral as well. Um, very much open to a wide variety of learners as well. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Carly Zabo, who's gonna take you on a journey of excellence in registered center care. So hello everybody, we're so excited to be here and be part of this event. Um, we were absolutely honored to present and to hear all of you present um, and share your stories in your homes about what's working great, how we can change, um, and how we can support our staff in really providing really excellent care. So I think you're already doing an amazing job, so kudos to all of you for <laughs> being here and for making a huge difference every day for the residents. And I hope that Conestoga can help support you in doing that with your staff as well. So one of the biggest things that I've learned in life is that a lot of our best lessons come from lived experience. <laughs> so one of mine is uh, my son just started karate and he was going around the house and he was saying, I'm on a quest to be my best, mummy. And I thought, yes, you know, this is great. I'm really excited about this. And about two months down the road, he said to me, mummy, what does that mean? <laughs> So he had learned that phrase at karate and he was really excited about it because it made everybody else happy, but he wasn't really sure what that meant. In our homes, I think we need to sometimes take a step back and think about, do our staff really understand what it means? Do, do they understand what our mission, vision, and values mean? Do they understand what person-centered care or person-directed care means? For some, it might need, they might need to write it down. They might need to stick it up. They might need to discuss it. They might need to share stories about how they've done it or what they've seen to be successful. Everybody learns a little differently. So sometimes learning from an experience or sometimes learning from a peer or sharing or writing or discussing will help them really embrace what that means. And a lot of times it's through role modeling. So we had discussed what do you do with those negative Nellies that don't want to change or that aren't ready for change. And part of that is just showing them the, the effect of this change, the effect of this whole idea and this philosophy of care. And so I think a lot of times um, we do have to really inspire and support our staff and not only giving them the language but also showing them what those act actions actually mean and that's what this whole course is all about um, i've been so fortunate to partner with josie mary lou the ria schlegel's uh, sclri um, to really understand what it is that our students are needing from us and from the sector so through our pac which is our program advisory committee we just sit down and say, hey, what are you struggling with? What is the biggest challenges that you're facing and how can we help meet those? So that's where this whole thing is grounded from and I think all of us should be on a quest to be our best as we are today and to help our, our team feel that they also wanna be on that quest. So how do we get there, right? A lot of you asking today, where do I start? How do I get there? So this is a program that we're looking to really um, help shape this change. <coughs> so. I'm going to take you on a little activity since, and nobody fall asleep because I know you're all feeling a little tired, but I want you to close your eyes. So I'm going to take you through a little guided exercise. And so for all of you listening virtually, please also participate in this and we'll give you instructions on how to participate. But first I just want you to close your eyes and I want you to really think about what matters in life. So 
So I want you to take a few minutes to just fill your lungs, to breathe in and out, in and out. I want you to think about your greatest achievements, the things that make you so happy in life, the things that bring you the greatest joy, your dearest memories. <coughs> I want you to think about who's there and what it looks like and what emotions it brings forward. I want you to think about what makes you you, what gives your life meaning, and what you couldn't live without. I want you to take two more breaths in and out, in and out. I want you to focus on three things. Now, I know there's lots more than three things that make us up who we are, but I'd like you to think of three specific things that make you who you are, three things that give you the most joy in life, three things that you couldn't live without, the things that make you the happiest. Think about the emotion, the colors, the sounds, everything that makes that moment special to you. I want you to open your eyes before you fall asleep on me. <laughs> and I want you to take out a piece of paper and I want you to write those three things down. If you need any paper, Kelly's going to kind of come around. So now I want you to trade with somebody that doesn't know you very well. So now I want you to think of this scenario. I want you to think you're a new team member at a long-term care home. Today, unfortunately, you're very short-staffed and prioritization of care needs to happen. As a team member, you're only gonna be able to meet one of those needs. Please stroke off two needs that you won't be able to meet. Oh, no, no, you're stroking off for somebody else. <laughs> Once you've had the opportunity to stroke off those two needs, I want you to hand it back to the person so they can have a look. <laughs> Thank you for all being brutally honest. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit now, and Kelly's going to hand over the mic to whoever is very eager and willing to share their personal experience with us. What did it feel like to have somebody else prioritize your needs? Did they choose what you would have chose? Yes. Yeah? So does anybody want to share what they wrote or what was taken away and what it felt like? This person, I'm already, I'm already very angry with her <laughs> <laughs> because uh, she says I can't sing anymore, which is not true. I'm an awesome singer. <laughs> and, uh, my whole family's been wiped out. So. Oh! <laughs> and she left me with my faith. Who cares? <laughs> for sharing that. Does anybody else have one they want to share? I know, I'm asking your most inner secrets, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> I like Michelle, I feel awful that my family got stroked off of us. Uh, but I have to say my three values, they're, they're all equally important to me, so it's really hard I would have said that about anything that was struck off the list, that it would have been horrible, or it is, feels horrible not to have that need met. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, absolutely. Um, were any one of those you know, three more important than the other? Sometimes, but sometimes not, right? It depends on what they were. For some people, coffee is a religion, right? <laughs> um, for others, it's being around pets being around family, being able to engage and contribute meaningfully, being able to teach, being able to fly a plane, right? All of these things give our lives meaning, but what's really important is that we're not all the same. And sometimes this is an activity that we use within resident center care to help really express to staff that we're all very different. And what I think might be really important to somebody else might not be important at all, right? And so this is an exercise that really helps them understand what it feels like to not be given that choice, 
to not be able to make that choice, to not be given options, even when things get a little crazy, right? So I think this is a really important lesson that we can always pass back to our staff to say, what really matters from the resident's perspective? What's important to them? And what's important to us isn't always the same thing, right? That bath, that meal, that walk, sometimes isn't their top priority. And so I think for most of us, getting up, showering, eating, <coughs> isn't what gives our life meaning, right? There's so much more. They're singing. <laughs> There's really making an impact and making a difference and having opportunity to be able to do that. So this is an activity that I use to really help engage that feeling that we were talking about. How do we make our staff, or how do we help our staff feel that movement and help really inspire that movement in other people? And when they get it, they get it. It doesn't take a whole lot. Once they get that idea of what resident centered care is, it's everything that you do. It's not one thing, not one activity, one lesson, one moment. It's everything. It's the way you approach absolutely everything. It's when I go to speak to somebody, I get to their level. When I stop and somebody's talking to me, I'm fully present. I'm not, you know, kind of distracted by the 12 other things that are pulling me in every direction. Because even that two minutes of really meaningful dialogue or really meaningful connection will make a huge difference in somebody's day. Somebody that's scared to come out of their room, somebody that's feeling really sad, somebody that's feeling very lonely. It's really important that we figure out how we can reach out, just as we were hearing today, to people that are otherwise not gonna come out because they're afraid, right? It's a big change. So what can we derive from this? That care prioritization is a reality. It's happening every single day. So we need to figure out how we can work within our systems and work within our team to make that happen. And we've heard of a lot of great strategies today about how we can help support our staff and in, in really giving meaning and life um, back to our residents. I want to shift away from quality of life and to move to quality of living because we're still living, right? It's not what we did in the past that defines us, it's who we are to this day because of what we've done in the past. Uh, instead of looking at lived experience, looking at living experience because we change and we adapt, right? So lots of times we hear families say, but they've always had coffee every single day but today they want tea, right? Or a lot of times we hear about, you know, what matters to me happening on admission, but how often is that being updated? You know, meaningful contribution of I'm teaching, you know? That's awesome, right? And I think that should really be celebrated about what am I doing here in the moment now every day to really inspire change within my home and how can we celebrate that with our residents? <laughs> So what do we look at? Uh, some of our initiatives are optimizing quality of life. So both of my roles, I'm the lead instructor for the ERCC course. I'm a training specialist, but I'm also palliative care hat. So everything that I talk about, everything that I um, influence within the home is all about quality of life and looking from a resident's perspective. Uh, Person-centered care, and we've even heard person-directed care, right? What's important to you? What, what can I do to help facilitate that? Collaborative partnerships, that's with the team, with the resident, and with the families. I hear lots of times like, oh no, here comes the family, you know, from staff. So, so we talk about that and I say, hey, I'm that family. So we start to talk about how can we meaningfully engage with families because they just want what's best for their family, right? And so let's sit down and talk and give them a voice and help diffuse the situation rather than avoiding them, which is only gonna make it worse, right? They're gonna find you. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, evidence-informed practice, obviously my background is also critical care, so evidence-informed practice needs to really be the backbone of what we do. It doesn't need to always drive everything, but it really needs to be a perspective that we consider about, um, and that's what I love about this model, is to have a research center right here to help mobilize that within your communities is just awesome. Safe, comfortable, and engaging living environments. So we heard about the gentleman being able to go and walk with the vest. I think that's awesome. Um, I'm a country girl, so if I wasn't allowed to be outside, I would probably have a lot of expressive behaviors <laughs> that probably weren't always warranted. Um, I think engaging, um, engaging living environments is really, really important. Um, we've heard so many amazing examples of how we're doing that, where people are growing their own food and then being able to share it um, at celebration within their home. I think creating a safe place to discuss um, is a really big part of ERCC. So what ERCC is, is we have a bunch of homes that come together and we discuss together some strategies and some ideas and some challenges. So you see that cross-pollination of staff. 
where they feel safe, they feel that they can share, they feel like they can ask the questions they've been meaning to ask that maybe they otherwise wouldn't have asked. They can plan and decide on what's really important to them. They can network with other homes and feel excited about the work that they're doing if they're that sole ranger within their home. So it gives them an opportunity to connect with other homes that are doing it, especially our really small homes that feel like they are by themselves in this journey or that are very, very um, new onto this whole culture change journey. So who is Conestoga? For those of you that don't know, um, we're part of the continuing ed department and we are growing exponentially. So under our program chair, Don Wildfong, um, we have every single uh, semester been increasing our intake. So we have a 20% growth over just this winter intake. We have over 12,000 students annually. We have many postgraduate certificates and you heard Kelly speak about our geriatric one which will be specific to any sector and any discipline. We have courses and certificates. We're much more than a catalog which is what you've heard of continuing ed in the past. We work, with, we work a lot with practice development, we work with contract training and collaborative uh, deliveries. So our most recent one was with um, Innisfree and Lazard, so they are hospice uh, located in our area and we also worked with Stedman. And we were, through the Ontario Job Grant, able to train their entire workforce. Um, so that was a really awesome initiative that we were able to do. With corporate packages, we're able to switch up courses. So people say, but how can I send my staff to this huge course? So sometimes we can break things up or, or adapt things to meet your needs. Those that are, you know, from Alberta, <laughs> where Mary Lou has reached out to, and from up north, we do have programs that we can adapt and bring up that way. So we do partner with other colleges. We do um, go mobile <laughs> as we do with ERCC. So there are opportunities if anybody is interested to say, how can I make this education reach out to our, our needs? So we've responded. So we've heard from you that the complexity of care is changing, which also means that the training um, needs some updating for some. Um, those age specific things that I need to be looking for, staff may or may not have had. The, you heard um, yesterday uh, Dr. Heckman talk about CHF, right? So COPD, all of these things um, that maybe in the past they didn't receive a whole lot of training on because it was mostly focused on care of the older adult. Um, we have a big focus on geriatric and mental health needs, so that's a big push from our program chair that this needs to be a big focus. So our whole philosophy is to build healthy communities, and so we're looking to support that initiative as well. We want to reduce practice variation. This is something that we see very often, right? We have a new grad working with somebody that has 40 years experience. There's a lot of variation in their practice. So this provides a venue to try and help <coughs> merge both of that, that lived experience and that new grad under a mentorship to support each other to be successful. We're a capability-driven framework, so we don't look at competency, we look at capability. So making people feel comfortable um, to be able to succeed within their work environment. And we look to support culture change. So how can I get started? What do I do? And the biggest thing of this is really engaging in that feeling of what's really important. So Excellence in Resident Centered Care is the program that I was talking about. So who attends? We have PSWs, we have registered nurses, we have um, BSOs, we've had directors, we've had educators, we've had um, RIA MDS coordinators, we've had dietary, kinesiologists, rec therapy, uh, a whole lot of different people and they're all there for the same reason, to inspire change. So our flyer, uh, which Kelly's holding up, is in your handout. It provides the specific information. It's a train the trainer model, so it looks at 24, uh, it's a 24 hour course, 16 hours is completed online, and then eight hours is completed as a workshop. They'll, they'll watch 12 e-learning modules um, online, and then they'll work on when we come into our in-class workshop, adult learning principles, strengths and opportunities for improvement. They develop an action plan, so we give them the skills and tools to go back to their, uh, their, their home and say, this is what I'm proposing, this is what I'd like to do, and these are the things that we would need to do to make it happen. And upon completion, they would be certified as a trainer and they would be able to go back and train within their home. Once they go back and train within their home, it's a 12-hour course. You can do it as a one-day, a two-day, lunch and learns, whatever suits your needs. The training is delivered uh, with the e-learning module, so they're the facilitator. They have those modules and they actually function that. And it's $25 per person they train. They would receive uh, a college transcript to show that they've completed the course and they would um, also receive a certificate to show they had completed it. 
a lot of times what I hear from people is how do I fit within my team? Um, what should I be looking for? Who should I be reporting it to? How do I report it? What should I be documenting? And what if I'm not being heard? So we give them the tools and the capability to feel empowered within their role and to really support them as the backbone of this system, right? So we really need to help facilitate those communications and conflict resolution and to have a voice within the team. So these are our modules, which is included in your handout. Um, how are we supporting culture change? So through the empowerment of staff. So education is a big part of that empowerment. They say, yay, I was selected to go. I'm so excited about that. Or they say, oh my goodness, they selected me. Everybody's going to be angry. And I'm like, no, you need to be excited about this. You were chosen because you're a leader within your home. And so we build them up to feel confident and capable to go out and handle that. Um, we look at evidence-informed practice, embracing personhood, and team collaboration. So I have a few quotes. Do I have time for the quotes? Yeah, okay. So a few quotes from some of the people that have been trained. Having the opportunity to come together and discuss concepts of resident-centered care has been very empowering and provided consistency of care with our residents. Being an ERCC trainer has allowed me to grow to heights I never imagined as a PSW graduate. This is from Natalie Hall. She's trained over 100 people. This course content gave me the confidence and pride to stand in front of my coworkers and help them understand and feel what it truly means to provide excellent resident-centered care and to be proud of the work that we do. This was Jackie McDonald, who was part of the Palliative Alliance group uh, up in Thunder Bay. So this is the enhancement. We're going through an enhancement, so all the modules are getting a little bit of a facelift. Instead of it being focused on just PSWs, we're changing all the terminology to say team member so that everybody um, can feel as part of the team to undertake this education. This is a tool that I've developed that is uh, part of the new program, and it looks at person-centered, listening, geriatric syndromes. A lot of PSWs don't know those specific things that they need to be watching for if somebody's not doing well. This comes from my background in ICU where we we're saying, gosh, if, only, if somebody only had a notice. So this is a tool that gives them, what should I be noticing or what do I need to be noticing? And then the actions they can take based on that. These are our upcoming sessions. As you can see, we're all over. We travel everywhere um, within Ontario, and we're even looking at um, possibly going to Alberta and Calgary. So this is very exciting for us, and we thank you so much for all of you that are here and that let us host within your homes. Uh, we are so excited to be able to do that. And my top three recommendations, encourage staff to get to know the personhood of each resident, support ongoing education for team members, get very creative. As a team, identify ways to optimize life and living. And I have put two flyers, sorry, I put two flyers in your handouts that are our palliative programs, which can also help those that are looking to launch palliative care within their homes. In my speech, I talked about uh, hooking up with our village of, of uh, Aaron Meadows, mm -hmm. and I'm the chairman of the VAT committee. Mm -hmm. And so we plan to collaborate with that high school with their new yeah. co-op. Now, the possibility can be widened to include Conestoga, can it not? Where you have a networking now started yeah. with LTC, high school, community college. Yeah. So I think that's something that you folks should think about. We're just in the, in the neophyte stage of getting this started. But this could grow because our kids, the, the high school kids, the young people, are the people that really need to find out what these places are like yeah. So we're going to be speaking to the community, high schools, yeah. and we want to think about having to join up with you folks in the near future for a, widening, a wider networking. Well, thank you for that opportunity. We're actually very excited about that. So Kelly and I were mentioning we run the high school major at the college right now with a standardized patient. So what better to have real life experience than to be able to be within the home with real residents. So I absolutely will bring that back to our program chair and, and I thank you for that. Um, we're very excited about that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. We are too. <laughs>